Hey guys, Brian here with Restoration, and I'm so glad that you are here with us again this week. Uh, we've been together for two weeks now, so that's that's really awesome. We're in week two of our series of Hi, My Name Is, and uh, I'm excited to have you along here again this week. If you missed last week, you can check it out if you want to. You don't have to, um, but if you want to, we give a brief overview of what Restoration is all about and uh, all that kind of stuff. So we've still got some cool stuff coming up. Um, I'm, I'm waiting to get back our uh, nonprofit status so that we can start doing some donation-based stuff, which will be really cool. Uh, but we wanted to get after some stuff uh, before any of that started. Uh, we, we have some, some words that we want to say and some things that we want to get off our chest and get to, to you guys. And so that's what this series is all about. And here I am at a lake. I uh, just went out to the, this piece of property today and uh, I thought it was a really nice setting. Um, I hope you think it's a really nice setting. I've, I always dreamed of having a place like this, right? Where you, you, can, you can come down off, off the house, on the dock, have your cup of coffee, and uh, just look at the water. There's something calming about being by water, and uh, that has always been a dream of mine. Now, unfortunately, this is not my property i'm just on it uh i did get permission i didn't like sneak onto this property and and just you know start filming um but i'm i'm here uh and this is a beautiful lake and uh yeah it's it's been a dream of mine for a really long time to have this some other you, you know i i always picture all these things that i wanted to have in my life before jesus came back right or or before i died i know that sounds kind of morbid like when I was in high school, I wanted to make sure that I got married um, and did all the things that comes along with marriage uh, before Jesus came back. And then it was like, oh, you know what? I really want to have kids uh, and see them grow up before Jesus comes back. And I wanted to have like this checklist of stuff that I wanted to get done with before like Jesus came back. And and there's nothing wrong necessarily with, with following your dreams and uh, looking after, you know, what what your best life could be like we, we hear that statement all the time nowadays don't we like live your best life now do whatever makes you feel good uh, however you find happiness do that like whatever's good for you is good for you and it'll be good for me because it's good for me and just like everybody just live peaceably with all and 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 let's not you know uh, dig on anybody's dreams too much because that's their best life and do whatever decisions you need to make and uh, I think it's it's no coincidence to me that that we have this idea right that that something around us is going to make us feel better that uh, whatever possessions I have whatever stuff I gather whatever lake house I own I don't own uh, but whatever lake house I own whatever whatever my house looks like whatever my family looks like that's the stuff that's gonna make me happy and I think we've really bought into this idea that uh, God is gonna bring us happiness and what that happiness looks like is stuff is is things is monetary value um, or a bunch of friends or something like that and I and, and then we start right with with uh, the way the world is now we start comparing ourselves to one another and and how uh, how much they have compared to how much we have and I believe um, I read a study that said depression is on the rise uh, in, and this was back in March, I read this article, 43% increase in, in depression, especially in young adults and teenagers today. There's a 43% increase uh, in depression cases. And I believe, and the study backs it up, that a lot of it has to do with us finding our, our own fulfillment in whatever it is we find around us and with social media, with comparing ourselves to one another and saying well they have this and they have that and we're looking all around us for the right answer we're looking at the lake house we're looking on social media we're looking at our jobs to fulfill us and according to scripture that just doesn't work so we're doing something wrong and we're doing something that that is not going to fulfill us that's not making us any happier we try to keep filling up that that hole that's that's inside of us that we all have this the void uh, and we keep trying to fill it with so many different things and we're going off track it we're not even close to having the right answer when we look at all this other stuff we can even be doing the right things and still not be satisfied still not be 
complete. We can look at scripture and then, okay, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do this. And we can still be incomplete. I know that sounds shocking, but we find it in scripture. That we can, we can be doing all of the right things. We can be uh, whatever that it looks like for you. We can be obeying the Ten Commandments and still have something missing. And the proof of that is in the story that I want, we want to read uh, this this week as we're in this 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 week's study. And it's found in Matthew chapter 19, starting in verse 16. Excuse me. And it says, "And behold, a man came up to him, him being Jesus, saying, Teacher. He calls Jesus teacher. What good deed must I do to have eternal life?" So this guy's asking the question, this is a familiar story to a lot of people, I'm sure, but he's asking the question of what good deed, what are the things that I have to do in order to have eternal life? What are, what are the things that I need to do to be right with God? And Jesus said, and he said to him, why do you ask me about what is good? There is only one who is good. If you would enter life, keep the commandments. He said to him, the, this young man said to him, which ones? And Jesus said, you shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, honor your father and mother, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. So basically he's going through the Ten Commandments. The young man said to him, all these I have kept, what do I still lack? So see, this young man has, has grown up in the church. He's learned all of the right things to say. He's learned all of the right things to do, but yet there's still something missing. Jesus said to him, If you would be perfect, go, sell what you possess, and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, and come follow me. When the young man heard this, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Now we can read this and be like, okay, so the one thing I have to do, I can do all of the Ten Commandments, but then I have to sell all my stuff and give it to the poor, and then I'll be right with God. But that's not the point of this story. See, Jesus told that young man that same that, that story and, and, and to give up all of his possessions because Jesus could see right into the heart of the man, right into his soul, and see what he lacked and see what his idol was. He was chasing after money. He was chasing after, you know, the almighty dollar, which we all tend to do, right? It seems to be the driving force behind everything that we do. I just had uh, in, in my small group this, this last week, we had talked about that specifically of how we continue to chase after money and everything we find uh, worth in, we find with a monetary value. And Jesus is saying, sell all of that stuff let go of it, get rid of it, and then come follow me. And the rich young man went away sad because he was too attached to his stuff. And the point of this story is the very last phrase that Jesus says. When he says, give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven, colon, and come, follow me. What he's telling the rich young ruler is to give up your possessions. Put those down. It's not about the possessions. Jesus says, it's, it's about me. Don't follow the Ten Commandments necessarily just to follow the Ten Commandments. Follow the Ten Commandments because you're following me, is what Jesus says. Did you know that Jesus did all of the Ten Commandments perfectly? He did every law perfectly. So if we look at Jesus, if we look at the law, and then we look at Jesus, and we see that Jesus fulfilled the law. He didn't abolish the law. He fulfilled the law. So if we look at Jesus, and we try to follow Jesus, we've obeyed the law. See, this guy had it flipped around. He wasn't following Jesus. He was obeying the law, but he wanted to get away from from the following Jesus part because he still wanted to hold on to his stuff. He wanted to be the ruler of his own life. You know, the subheading of that passage says the rich young 
ruler. So he was a man who had a lot of stuff and he was probably in charge of some people. And Jesus says, put me first in your life and then you will find eternity and then you will find contentment. Then you will find joy. Then you will find love. Then you will find that that void in your, in your life that you're, you're, you're trying to fill up with with all this stuff, with a nice lake house, then it's going to be filled because of what Jesus has done for us. See, our vision for, for Restoration Church is, is people following Jesus. And we made it a really simple vision because we wanted people to remember it. But isn't that what it's all about? Isn't that the only thing that matters in our Christian walk is people following Jesus? Jesus specifically I want to follow Jesus and I want you to follow Jesus it's not wrong to have dreams it's not wrong to, to dream of having this kind of stuff but the question has to be is what is fueling your dream is it pride? Is it something that you want? Is it uh, a desire of, of your, uh, your, your, your making? Or is your dream birth thought of something that Jesus is calling you to? And that's a dream worth pursuing. See, so many of our dreams, we, we want to puff ourselves up, right? Our dreams are to make us look better and to make us um, more money or, or to have more friends or to have more reign over something or, or, or to own a business, whatever that looks like. But our dreams should be whatever Jesus wants us to do. See, we want to be people following Jesus. And that comes at a great cost. It comes at a tremendous cost, but it's a cost very worth it. In Matthew 16, verses 24, through uh, 26, it says uh, another familiar passage, but I, I just want to get this through our thick heads. <laughs> and by our thick heads, I mean my thick head because I chase after so many different things. I find myself chasing after humility. I find myself chasing after knowledge. I find myself chasing after wealth. And Jesus is just saying, if you would just come after me, I will put love inside of your life. I will put joy inside. Matthew 16, 24. Then Jesus told his disciples, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Now the disciples, remember, this is before Jesus died on the cross. So the only way that they know of what a cross is is by capital punishment. Punishment, pain that's inflicted upon uh, criminals. And so this has to be a really weird thing for Jesus to say to the disciples, to take up your cross? You mean to take up this, this, this means of torture, this means of death? This, this means of carrying out a sentence to the guilty? You want us to do, do that? and follow you, we don't get this. And even though he had just said that he was going to be um, put to death, they don't get it. And Jesus goes on and says, for whoever would save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? Or what shall a man give in return for his soul? See, we chase after all this stuff because we think it's going to make us feel better. We think by elevating our ego or elevating our pride or elevating our riches or our fame or, or whatever, that is going to make us feel better. And pastors are just as guilty of this. We feel that if we have a bigger congregation or if we uh, reach more people for Jesus, that somehow we're going to be elevated, right? Right? I know that's what goes through my head. Like, if only I have that many people following me, or if I have that many people that, that come to a church service, then I must be doing something right. 
we have this crazy thing where we feel like we can increase. But we have to take up our cross and follow Jesus. We want to be people following Jesus. That means denying ourselves and following him. One of my favorite things in the Bible, one of my favorite verses is in uh, John chapter 3, verse 30. It's John the Baptist, and he's got this really large following of people, and he's baptizing them, and, you know, kind of in a lake like this, hopefully a little bit warmer than what it is uh, in there right now. And he's baptizing people, and then Jesus comes, and he gets to baptize Jesus, right? And his followers are like, oh, you know, this guy's kind of taken over. In John, in chapter 3, verse 30, he says, He must increase, and I must decrease. So church, wherever you're listening or watching right now, keep that in mind. He must increase. So in your life, in your dreams, in your plans, in living your best life now, He must increase, and we must decrease. So what does that look like? I don't know, maybe it means putting yourself last in line. Maybe it means giving to someone else what, what you have. Maybe it means pouring out your possessions for others. Maybe it means spending time with somebody when you really don't want to. Maybe it means loving your kids and your, and your wife and your, your husband in a way that honors them instead of trying to inflate you. He must increase. We must decrease. And church, that's what restoration is going to be about. We want to decrease and we want to show Jesus to the world. There's so many things that we can do. There's so many avenues that we can take, but if God is not the center of this whole thing, if Jesus is not the center of this whole thing, if our entire focus is not on Jesus, if we are not people following Jesus, then we might as well close up shop before it even gets started. So count the cost. Weigh it out. Jesus gives you that option. Are you ready to give it up? Because God is promised you something greater. This this whole lake setting is beautiful, but we know it's even more better, the peace that comes with Jesus Christ. I'm not saying it's an easy life. I'm not saying it's, it's going to be all unicorns and rainbows and butterflies and we're all just singing kumbaya together. But what I, what I am saying is in the midst of the storms, in the midst of whatever's going on in your, in your life, there will be peace. If you make Jesus the one that you're following, everything else fades away and he remains. And watch Watch him blow your mind. So that's what we want to do. We want to be people following Jesus. We hope that you want to do that as well. And if you have questions, please send us a message. Send us a message wherever you're watching this, and, and we'll try to respond as quickly as possible. If you have questions about any of this stuff, we want to talk to you about it. Thank you so much for watching. So, thank you so much for listening. We hope you have a great day, and uh, we will see you next time.